This video is for C1.3 on photosynthesis, and we're going to take a look at the higher level material, particularly from the light dependent reactions. Now the light dependent reactions are going to need light. And if we want to use light, we have to be able to absorb that light. So this is going to involve pigments. Pigments are embedded in structures called photosystems. And we're going to find those photosystems embedded within the membrane of the thylakoids. So where is that? Well, here we have the double membrane of a chloroplast. And inside the chloroplast, I have these grana. These grana are made of thylakoid disks. So if I take out a thylakoid disk, it's gonna look like this. And imagine I'm able to kind of like chop it in half and look at it from the side. And I'm just gonna focus in on one tiny part of it. That allows me to look at just the thylakoid membrane. Now, embedded within this thylakoid membrane are these structures called photosystems. There's a lot of stuff in photosystems, one of which being a reaction center. So this reaction center is full of chlorophyll and its job or its function is to contain uh, electrons that can be excited when chlorophyll absorbs these photons of light. So these electrons are going to be excited and then captured by electron receptors. Now you may hear people refer to photosystem two as photosystem 680 or photosystem one as photosystem 700. And that's because these are the wavelengths of light at which they work most efficiently. So that's a great way to remember them because two and then one is confusing, but 680 actually comes before 700. The other interesting part to kind of recognize about these different photosystems is that they're going to excite electrons. That's, that's a similarity, but they also need that electron to be replaced. And where that electron is coming from is going to be very different for each one of these. So the electron that we lose from photosystem one is going to be replaced by photosystem two, okay? So we're going to take the electron from photosystem two when we're done with it, and we're gonna pass it to photosystem one to replace the electron that we're gonna lose from photosystem one. So remember, each of these is losing an electron. So great, the electron is gonna pass from here to here. The electron that this guy loses, however, is not gonna be replaced. We're not just doing a switcheroo here. This electron is going to come from the photolysis of water, okay? So the difference in where these replacement electrons of um, are coming from is going to be one of the major differences. So these differences are important, the difference between photosystem one and photosystem two, but honestly, if you can just remember that Photosystem two comes first and it helps to produce ATP and then photosystem one comes next and it um, produces reduced NADP, then again, that will get you a long way. Now, I've been kind of simplifying these photosystems a bit. In the middle of the photosystem is this reaction center. So we did mention that, and that reaction center has chlorophyll, and the job of chlorophyll is to provide an electron that we can excite. But what we haven't mentioned yet are all of these other pigments. So there are other accessory pigments embedded within this photosystem, and they can absorb photons of light, and those photons eventually get passed to the reaction center. So this is a really great adaptation for these photosystems because different pigments can absorb different wavelengths of light. So if I have different pigments here in this reaction center, that means it can absorb different wavelengths of light. And eventually all of that energy will get passed to the reaction center where the chlorophyll A molecules are. Let's focus on photosystem two for just a moment because we're gonna highlight this process of photolysis and what's happening with those electrons. So when photosystem two absorbs a photon of light, it's going to bounce around these accessory pigments and eventually land at the reaction center where the chlorophyll A molecule is. That is going to excite an electron. Okay, and we're gonna use that electron for an electron transport chain in just a moment. 
but for the time being, we have to replace that excited electron. And that is going to, again, be done using the photolysis of water. So photolysis uh, means splitting a water using energy from light. So I'm gonna take two, I'm gonna do the balanced equation. So the two water molecules are going to get split up into a molecule of oxygen gas plus four of these protons, these hydrogen ions, and then four electrons. So when I split two water molecules, that's actually enough to replace four lost electrons. And it's not so much that you need to understand the numbers four here and two there and one there. That's not the important part. The important part is understanding that we lost an electron from this excitation, and then we're gonna replace it using the electron that comes from the photolysis of water. Now, why do plants need water? Well, for lots of reasons, but why does photosynthesis need water? Just for this, okay? The whole reason why photosynthesis requires water is because we need these electrons and we're going to end up using these protons here in just a bit. What they don't need is this oxygen. And so this oxygen is actually given off as a byproduct. It's not necessary. It's really at this point about this replacement electron. Let's go through this process from start to finish. Photosystem two is going to absorb a photon of light and that is going to excite an electron from that reaction center, from those chlorophyll molecules. And we're going to need to replace that electron. Lucky for us, we have some electrons that are produced from that photolysis reaction. And so we're gonna use those electrons to replace this excited electron that just came from the reaction center in photosystem two. Now this electron is going to be passed to a system of carriers, okay? This is the electron transport chain that is embedded in the thylakoid membrane. And every time that electron is passed, it's going to liberate energy. And we're going to use that energy to power active transport. And this active transport um, is going to be in the form of proton pumps. So these protons are going to be actively pumped into the thylakoid space. So Again, every time this electron is being passed down the chain, that powers proton pumps and allows them to pump these protons into the thylakoid space. Now, one of the great advantages of this thylakoid space or thylakoid lumen, those words mean the same thing. One of the advantages of the, that small space is that we very quickly accumulate a very high concentration of protons here. And now we're going to see that these protons are going to move out through ATP synthase passively. So remember ATP synthase, just like in cell respiration, is a, a double duty protein. It acts as a channel for facilitated diffusion. And of course, that's the movement from a high, high concentration to low through a protein. Okay, so it's acting as our channel protein, but it is also acting as an enzyme. So when those protons are moving through ATP synthase, it creates kinetic energy and we are able to catalyze the conversion of ADP into ATP. And that is how photosystem two generates ATP. So now that we've covered how photosystem two helps to generate ATP, we can focus in on how photosystem one helps produce reduced NADP. So I know this sounds a lot like respiration, right? So in respiration, we had an electron carrier called NAD. In photosynthesis, the <laughs> electron carrier is NADP. P doesn't actually stand for photosynthesis, but since you don't have to know the full term, I like to think that it does. So this P tells my brain that this is the electron carrier in photosynthesis. And just like with NAD, I can reduce it to form reduced NADP. 
So that's what we're trying to form here using Photosystem 1. So this is going to start off much the same. Photosystem 1 is going to absorb a photon of light, okay? And that is going to help excite an electron. So this should be sounding familiar. Now, I need to replace that electron. It doesn't like missing an electron. That electron is going to get replaced using the old electron from photosystem two. Meanwhile, this new electron that we've excited from photosystem one is going to get passed to this enzyme. And I've drawn this so little that I can't fit the name in here. This enzyme, so I'll color code it. This enzyme is called NADP reductase enzyme, and it's right here. And it's going to use that electron to turn NADP into, you guessed it, reduced NADP. Okay, so it is literally transferring that electron. And so that's what's happening right here with this NADP reductase enzyme. So this is how we've gone from photosystem one to reduced NADP. So you can see here that both of these processes involving photosystem two and photosystem one are related. They're connected through this electron, but they in fact make very different products. Now these photosystems are embedded within the thylakoid membrane. If I'm looking at a chloroplast, that's what I've drawn over here. Remember chloroplasts have an outer membrane and an inner membrane. These thylakoids are going to be inside the chloroplast. Well, prokaryotes like bacteria, they don't have uh, a chloroplast but they do have thylakoids. It's just these thylakoids are attached to this uh, cell membrane that's on the inside here. So remember prokaryotes have a cell wall and then a cell membrane, the thylakoids um, are attached there. So they're not technically membrane bound organelles, but this should make sense, especially if you've studied any of the embiosis stuff before, that these chloroplasts originated or evolved from photosynthetic prokaryotes, which is why we're seeing some similarities here. So we'll wrap up this video by just getting a broad sense of where things in photosynthesis are happening. So we have a chloroplast here, and a chloroplast has an outer and inner membrane. Together they make up the envelope. They don't function as separately as they, uh, the mitochondria ones do. Then inside of the chloroplast, we have these thylakoid discs, a stack is called a granum, and these thylakoid discs are going to be where the light dependent reactions occur. So the light dependent reactions need light. Um, and that's the whole function of these uh, pigments that we see in the thylakoids, it's to absorb light. The light independent reactions don't need light. That's literally what that means. And they're going to occur in this um, like watery based substance that fills up the rest of the chloroplast called the stroma. So this is where like things like the Calvin cycle are going to be occurring. Uh, we'll talk about that in another video.